Hey guys, I'm about halfway through restoring the chassis for a sister set to that Admiral 24A12 in my previous series of videos. Uh, and I thought you might like to see how I actually go about replacing these old components. As you can see, here's all the uh, new capacitors in yellow and uh, new resistors in blue. And uh, you know, I still have a few left to do over on this side. So, uh, for example, right here, I've got a 0 .005 microfarad at 600 volt. I've already pulled out a replacement. Um, one thing you should know about these old sets is that they used to use a different uh, value scheme um, where they would end in whole numbers like 0 .005, 0 .003, 0 .002. That changed, I think, around in the 50s or 60s to use uh, a certain numerical procession. So now it's more like 0 0.01, 0 0.022, 0 0.033, 0 0.047, 0 0.056, 0.068, and so on. So there is no actual 0 0.005 made today commonly. If you search around specialty manufacturers, you may be able to find one. But also keep in mind these old components were typically plus minus 20% intolerance. So a 0 .0047 is just fine. So that's what I've got pulled out here. And it's rated at 630 volts, so replacing a 600 volt cap will be just fine. Now to get these old parts out, uh, these are mounted on terminal strips. The old leads were wrapped around and then soldered on. Two basic techniques I use. If it's in a crowded area and, I'm, and there's other parts attached and I'm not going to be replacing those, I will just clip out the lead and leave a little tail sticking off, uh, you know, like uh, like a sixteenth of an inch or so of the old metal lead. I will take the new part and take a lead and wrap it around like a nail to make a corkscrew out of it or like a little pigtail and then just slide that over and solder it on. Uh, it's a time-honored way to do this. I find repairs and such that were probably done 50 years ago, and that's what they did. Or you could also just cut this short and wrap the lead around the post, but that gets messy. Uh, when I see repairs like that, I, I actually unsolder, remove the solder, and remove, uh, take off the old leads because that just will build up and you know, end up getting a big blob here, which can actually end up shorting out to the adjacent uh, terminal if you keep if you. Uh, keep building up uh, the solder like that. The other technique I use is to use solder braid and actually remove all the solder and unwrap all these leads and get down to the bare metal terminal. I especially do that if I know I'm going to be re replacing like say this resistor here and this resistor here so I'll be re replacing all the parts anyways. Might as well just take them all off. Uh, in fact, I go through a lot of solder braid because in these um, older sets they use a lot more solder than you might be used to if you work on more modern like circuit boards. So instead of, I started out using smaller spools like this but I was blowing through them so fast now I buy these gigantic like uh, 50 foot length with uh, double wide solder braid. So let, I'm going to check these resistors, and if they're off and I'm going to be replacing them as well, I will unsolder this. Otherwise, I'm just going to cut these leads off short. So let me grab a meter and take a look. Okay, I've grabbed my meter. Let me check this resistor on the same terminal here. It's supposed to be 47K. Let's see what we've got. Well, 57.8, uh, like I mentioned before, resistors tend to drift up in value with age. That's pretty far off, so I'm going to be replacing it, so I'm going to actually remove all the solder from that terminal. So, our soldering iron. i got a variable wattage weller. It's about 50 watts at the highest setting. These older sets with these larger terminals and such, you're going to want maybe a larger wattage iron than you use for circuit boards. So, let's see. Basically you use capillary action, you put the braid between the iron and the joint, let the heat transfer and there's rosin on this solder braid and it'll actually draw the solder off onto it. 
and like I say, <laughs> there's a lot of solder on these old joints. So just to do one of these, you can use a good five inches of this stuff. So that's why I buy it in bulk. All right, that should be enough. Now to unwrap these, it's like a really small pair of needle nose pliers, and get in there and wrap it just like that. Same with the resistor. And one more. And once I got these off, I'll uh, clean up the terminal a little bit too, because there's usually a lot of flux and crap left behind. First, it can be kind of tough to get into these sometimes. That's why I say when you're tight, tight quarters, I uh, I just will uh, use the pigtail method. All right, there we go. So I'm, let me clean off the other lead, and then I'll wrap on the new parts and show you the uh, final results. Okay, <clears throat> I've got the new resistors put in place here, here, and here. Uh, you may have noticed in some of the other replacements I've done, like lead over here, I put a little heat shrink tubing on the on the lead. Uh, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Uh, it depends on the situation. Most of the original wiring does not have it, uh, but when there's tight quarters, uh, sometimes I used it back in the original set, and I do the same. Like for example, up here where there's uh, leads that are crossing over each other and there's even you know even a remote chance that these might short out uh, same up here I will put heat shrink tubing on don't really need it here but I'll show you how it goes just for uh, sake of ex explanation so uh, cut off a little bit now this this tubing in particular came when I ordered my capacitors just as a, like a courtesy Otherwise, I, uh, I buy big rolls of this stuff from uh, Mauser Electronics. So what I do is cut off a little bit, usually about an inch or three quarters is how much I need. And uh, to shrink it down, you need to apply heat. You could use a heat gun, you could use a lighter. I use the uh, easiest, most convenient thing I've got in ha on hand, which is the soldering iron, and I use the, uh, the little joint where uh, the tip meets the body and just rub it along or just hover it right below I mean you don't really want to make too much contact or the stuff actually starts to melt there we go to the other end and I suggest you put the heat shrink tubing on before you do any bending of the leads because it'll make it a lot easier Alright, so the next step is to bend the lead so they fit onto this. And I need to go from the first to the fourth terminal, so right about like that. So I'm going to bend it here and about there. Just about right. I'm going to use small needle nose pliers again and bend. Squeeze it down. Same over here. You cut these leads in little bits of wire, go flying. It's not a bad idea to keep track of where they land because uh, could very well fall into something else and get caught and short it out when you actually power up the set. Alright, so all that's left is to solder it up. I use some old uh, 6040 uh, rosin core solder. Nowadays, I don't even not even sure if you can get lead solder anymore because everything's done lead free. But I've stocked up on uh, both some some Kester and some uh, multi core stuff. So uh, there's still plenty of lead based solder out there. And you want to get rosin core because it will flow a lot better. So heat up the opposite side of the terminal and feed the solder in on the other side and that's it.
Alright. So, that's all there is to it. And once that cools out a little bit, I'll take a Q-tip and some alcohol and clean up the joint a little bit. And then move on to the rest of the set. Hopefully by the end of the week I'll be able to test fire this up and show you guys another video.